They can't uh, afford to let their guard down now. There are so many un unanswered questions uh, by the situation as it stands now. That drive to Moscow, that uh, really unbelievable scenes that we've been covering for uh, the last 24 hours, a little bit more than that, uh, that has ended. But what does that mean? What does that deal with between Prigozhin and the Kremlin mean for the future of the offensive and the invasion of Ukraine? Uh, those Wagner mercenaries, as you hear, will... Uh, enter into contracts with the Russian Ministry of Defense, but there's clearly no love lost between those two entities. So what will that mean uh, for that counteroffensive? European uh, powers here in Brussels have said they're monitoring the situation very closely. We've heard that line from uh, the European Commission, that building behind me, from NATO, also based here in Brussels, but also from the British government in London, monitoring the situation very closely because, of course, that Ukrainian counteroffensive is still going on and there will be uh, an impact on uh, that counteroffensive, an impact on the invasion of Ukraine by Russia, but it's quite hard to measure exactly what that will be. We know that these Wagner fighters will apparently join uh, the Ministry of Defense, the Russian military forces, uh, by signing those contracts. These are seasoned fighters that have been very loyal to their paramilitary Wagner group, and so there's a question there about what happens then uh, with uh, uh, Prigozhin out of the picture, or certainly out of Ukraine and in Belarus seeking exile, what does that mean on the ground? Well, that's something that European uh, leaders, European authorities will be monitoring extremely closely as they continue to consider how much support uh, to send to Ukraine. We know that those F-16s training beginning this summer on F-16s for Ukrainian pilots. So really monitoring the situation and trying to find out exactly what the fallout will be.